This is the place. It's okay. It's actually not that bad. The way your mother was talking, I was expecting some kind of murder house. Yeah, you shouldn't pay too much attention to my mom. She and Uncle Alex didn't exactly get along. rather musty. Well, it's either this or 2,000 bucks a month for the apartment. I love it. Right. Is that him? Yeah, that's Uncle Alexander. Still feels a bit weird, staying in a dead man's house. Well, it's just a house. Diane. Hey, 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 let me get uh, that. Come on. I'm three months pregnant, Mitch. I'm not an invalid. I know, I just... Will you, will you take it easy? For me. Try the faucet. Right. Try under the counter. I think the fuses are in the basement. I'll go take a look. Diane, come see what I found. Diane! Hey, Mom. How is she? She's fine. Uh, we saw Dr. Fielding. And everything's fine. The baby's fine. You should be more careful. Imagine letting her carry boxes in from the car. I told you nothing good would come from 
from you staying in that house. Please, Mom, don't start this again. Well, think of your poor sister. But, Mom, I, I don't get how it affects Karen if I'm staying here. She, she doesn't even know what day of the week it is. Don't say that. Well, it's true. When was the last time you saw her? I don't know. It's, it's been a while. A while? Maybe a year, I guess. Mitch Walker, how could you? Abandoning your own sister. Well, when did you last visit? It's been hard for me to get out there since your father passed. You have a perfectly good car. Yeah, when it works. Listen, Mom, you know things haven't been great financially for me and Diane. Staying here at the house, it's really going to help us out. The rent in town was crippling us. It's no place for my grandchild to be born and raised. The good Lord has seen fit for you and Diane to be blessed with this child. Where was he a year ago? There's evil in that house. You mark my words. Jesus, Mom! What did you say? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I... It's just a house. Okay, maybe uh, maybe I'll fix things up. We can make some money on it. Nothing good will come of that house. Okay. All right. Well, look, uh, I gotta check on Diane, so uh, I'll call you tomorrow. Remember what I said, Mitch. I will. I certainly will. All right. You take care, Mom. All right. I'll speak to you soon. The power's on. Was that your mother? How did you guess? You always sound like that when you speak to her. Like what? Oh, like a little boy getting a scolding. Well, you know how she can be. You know, she really has a problem with this house. <sighs> Look, it's Maybe not we should the just... house. It's Uncle Alex. Well, you said they didn't get along. I think it runs deeper than that. You know my mom's devout. Yes. I have the church wedding pictures to prove it. Uncle Alex, kind of the reverse. Atheist? No, worse than that. He's like a spiritualist or a psychic or whatever. You know? Crystal healing, tarot cards, all that stuff. Doesn't sound all that bad. This is my mom we're talking about. Remember the time we had to hide those Harry Potter books in the apartment? <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah. Anyway, she and Uncle Alex, they just about got along. I mean, my dad was always the peacekeeper. Wish I could have met him. Yeah. I'll never know how he ended up married to my mom. Anyway, something happened. I was around eight or nine. We were staying here for the weekend. I remember the day before. We were in the basement. Uncle Alex was taking pictures. He had that, uh, the special camera that could photograph your aura. You ever heard of that? I think it's called Krillian. Is it Krillian or Krillian or something? The aura is supposed to represent your personality or your guardian angel or something. And, oh, shoot. What? No, I just remember what I found in the basement this morning. I want to show you something.
I didn't come to drink tea, Mom. I came to talk about what happened with Uncle Alex. Now look what you made me do. Please, Mom, let me, will you let me do that? Why are you doing this to me? I won't talk about it. I won't. If your father were alive... Well, he isn't. Mom, Dad's gone, Uncle Alex is gone, so it's just you and me to deal with this, and I'm sick of all the secrets in this family. I've never heard you speak to me like this, Mitch, in all my days. After all I've done for you. After all the sins I've forgiven. I'm worried about Karen. Not worried enough to go visit her. I used to, Mom. You know I did. But since Diane and I... Since we lost the baby, and then there was the wedding, the apartment, you know I lost my job. Karen's just a long way out. It was the best place for her. Yeah, but wasn't there some Place close. It was now. the best place. Your father agreed. Yeah, I'm not too sure he was happy. Your father agreed. We agreed as a family. She needed care. How is Diane? She's okay. Just low blood pressure, that's all. Is she taking anything for it? Yes. I'm resting a lot. So she should be. You know, I... I pray for the two of you every night. And you wonder why I'm concerned about you staying in that house? Dan should be somewhere safe in her condition. Not in a place like that. Then tell me what happened there. Give me a chance to understand. <sighs> you just turned nine years old. I don't know why we went there every winter. Your uncle was fooling around with that camera. He made us all pose for pictures in the cellar. Dear Lord, it was cold down there. Uh, that evening, your uncle was in a, a terrible mood. He ate nothing at dinner and he said nothing to anyone all evening. Well, later that night, your father woke me saying that he'd, he'd been to check on you and Karen and that Karen was was missing from her bed. 
we checked the bathroom and the other bedrooms. And your uncle was missing too. I don't remember this. They didn't want to wake you. And the, then we checked the basement. And there she was. My little girl. He had her... <laughs> there were... ropes... tied around her arms and legs, tying her down. Her face was... wet with tears. But she wasn't crying. Not anymore. She was speaking, quietly speaking, the, the same words over and over. Get it out of me. I don't want it in me. It's hurting me. So now you know. Now you know our family's dirty little secret. And I never want to hear your uncle's name mentioned in this house again. What, what happened next? You know what happened next? Karen never recovered her mind after what he after that night. So is that when it started? Her illness? It was the trauma. Of course, those, those so-called doctors, they couldn't prove anything. But I know what it was. It was only then that she started hearing the voices and stopped recognizing her own family. What happened to Uncle? I mean, did he go to jail? Well, I told you they couldn't prove anything. Karen was too sick to talk to the police. So we just made sure never to have contact with him again. Of course, he wrote letters. And what did he say? I burnt them in the fire. And now, God willing, the same thing is happening to him. He's burning in the fire of hell. doing? I don't know, wasting my time probably. This was the camera I was telling you about. Oh, the one that's supposed to photograph people's auras. Right. I was just trying to see if I can get it to work. Why? Look at these. This one's me. That's your aura. That's so cool. So what do all the different colors mean? Here, take a look. Secrets of Curly and Photography by Ada Devere. Okay, I think I'll give that one a miss. 
All right, well, take a look at this picture. Jesus. Who is that? Karen, when she was seven. There's all that stuff around her. I don't know, maybe this camera's just a bunch of bullshit, I don't know. Wait, stand over there. Okay, now don't move. Wait, wait. This hasn't got any radiation or anything in it, has it? No, it's fine. Okay, now we wait a second. Jesus. What is it? Look at this. Is that... Is that pink my aura? Look closer. I don't know. I think I need to talk to someone who knows about this stuff. Well, do you think uh, Ada Devere's still around? There she is. Ada Devere, registered psychic. Tarot readings, seances, chakra alignment. Seances? Come on. Everybody knows all that stuff's a fraud. Well, my uncle believed it. Well, maybe Uncle Alex believed he could make money from it. And that woman too. Maybe. So, Mr. Walker, I gather you are interested in a tarot reading. Yes, uh, my wife and I are about to start a family. Your wife is pregnant? Yes, three months. Congratulations. Is it your first? Uh, yes. You're not sure? Well, uh, we lost a baby before. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. So you would like to know what the cards predict for the immediate future? That's it, exactly. You do realize this is not an exact science. I can't tell you which lottery ticket to buy or what color to paint the nursery. I understand. And your wife didn't want to come along? Uh, well, she's, um, she's a little skeptical, I guess you could say. Well, it's not uncommon for partners to be skeptical, but usually it's the wives who come to see me and the husbands who stay at home. Right. So I'm just wondering what makes you the exception. Well, I just find it all fascinating, and um, so how does it all work? Well, you select a card. Don't be too concerned. The cards are not literal. They need to be interpreted, and the real meaning comes from the combination of the cards. Now, would you mix the rest of the pack up, keeping them face down at all times? Okay. Why do I do this part? It is said that by touching the cards, you imbue them with your energy, your hopes, and your dreams. Now, let's see what combination we get. Oh. Have you suffered a bereavement in the family recently, uh, a apart from... Uh, yes, my own grandfather um, passed away a month ago. Really? Were you close? Yes. What was the cause of death, exactly? Uh, it was, uh, cancer. It was very sudden. What was his name? His name, uh... Mr. Walker, 
If you have come here to waste my time and yours, then I suggest you leave. The cost of the reading is $98, and that goes for real or fictional members of your family. I'm sorry. I just didn't want to give you any information. You know, I've read about these things. You people ask questions, and then people tell you their life stories, and then you feed back the same information as if by magic. I have never claimed to know anything about magic, Mr. Walker. Now, why don't we stop pretending that you've come here for a tarot reading and tell me more about your uncle, I think you were going to say, and whatever it is that you have in your jacket pocket that you would like to show me. How do you know that? You keep putting your hand on it to make sure it's still there. Who is this girl? That's my sister. It's an old picture from when she was seven. This was taken with a curly and camera? Yes, by my uncle. He was kind of in your profession before he died. What is it? Alexander Dupre? Yes. Have you heard of him? I should have known immediately I saw the picture. Alexander was the only person who persevered with the curly and photography equipment when everybody else thought it was a fad. So Alexander has passed away. I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't know you knew him. Were you friends? Yeah, kind of. It was a long time ago. And, um, where is your sister now? She's in a mental health facility near the coast. Been there almost all her life. Since what age? Well, she was fine to begin with, but by the time that picture was taken, she had suffered a trauma. Trauma? I think she was hurt by my uncle. Hurt? You know, abused. Oh, my Alexander? It's unlikely. No, I don't think your uncle was the cause of her trauma. I think that is. And what is that? How long ago was this picture taken? 30 years. 30 years. There is a chance she may be free of it. Free of what? Only there was a way to make sure. Oh, I still have the camera. The Curlean camera? Could you get your sister in front of it? I don't know. I mean... Mr. Walker, my advice to you is to get your sister out of that facility and in front of the Curlean camera. There is a chance that I can help her. But first, we have to know if she still carries this with her. Just one more question. You said this photograph was taken 30 years ago. Can you tell me the exact date? Uh, my mom said I just turned nine, so that would make it November. Thank you. Dr. Sims? Uh, Jeff, I'm not a doctor. Uh, Karen Walker, right? Yeah, uh, it's my sister. Is she always like this? Pretty much. Does she talk? Not that I've heard. Likes to draw, though. Draw? Used to draw around the walls, so they gave her some paper and a pencil. 
Some of it's in the file, I think. She's not dangerous, is she? Wasn't there a form or something to say why she was committed? Well, that'll be the pink form. Well, that's weird. What? This is normally signed by a doctor, but this one just says transferred to resident status by personal consent of Ellen, no, Elaine. Elaine Walker? Yeah, that's, that's my mom. I've never seen one of these before. What, what does it mean? Your sister was never committed. She was placed in the care of this facility voluntarily by permission of Elaine Walker. So does that mean she's free to leave? Do you have ID? Karen? I'm gonna start the car now, okay? I'm gonna take you home. All right? Karen, it's Mitch. It's your brother Mitch, remember me? Huh? Who is this? Is this your sister? Will you keep your voice down? I don't want to freak her out. Mitch, your mum put her into that facility because she needs professional care. Excuse me, Karen. Are you okay? It's just my blood pressure. I took the stairs too fast. All right, well, let me help you to the couch. Come on. No, really, I'm okay. It's okay. I just need to sit down. Okay, you probably shouldn't leave Karen downstairs by herself. She's, she's fine. I just want to make sure you're okay. Shit. You're right. You are right. Karen, I just... Shit! November. Is she asleep? I think so. It's hard to tell. I left her on the couch. So did she do it? Do what? Oh, you know what. Break the camera. No, no, it just slipped off the stand. You know, I should have tightened the screw. That stuff's old. It could have easily broken loose. Yeah, right. She's not violent, Diane.
So, can you fix it? What? The camera, dummy. Maybe. Yeah, I think the film's ruined, but uh, I can't imagine a place that sells it. I'm sorry. It's just sometimes, you know? Sometimes I'm just so scared for the baby. Look, it's gonna be okay, all right? Even my mom is praying for us. Mitch, it's getting cold. Shoot, I left Karen's sweater in the basement. Okay, I'll go down and get it. You just work on getting her into the car. Karen, we're gonna get you in the car now, okay? Jesus, Karen, please! Hey! I thought you said the camera was broken! It was on the ground right there and pieces of all the film was spilled out. Are you sure? Yes. be seeing things. Uh-huh. Mitch, where are you going? 
to get Karen. I want to get that picture taken right now. Do you want me to hold her? I don't think it matters. I gotta get this to Ada. You're not leaving me here with Karen, are you? Yeah, she'll be fine. Don't worry. How do I look after her? I mean, should I call your mother? No. She mustn't know about this. She'll go crazy if she finds out I brought Karen back to this house. She'll be fine. It's worse, isn't it? Is that what you expected? Well, I thought there might be a small chance it had left her, but... Uh... What is it? This may not be easy for you to hear, Mr. Walker. Listen, if there's a way to help Karen, I don't care what it is. Right. I want you to listen very carefully. Since long before recorded history, our Earth has been inhabited by a form of... I hesitate to use the word life, as the rules of life that we know do not apply to these beings. Nevertheless, a form of entity that we cannot, under normal circumstances, see or sense. On rare occasions throughout history, these entities have, for one reason or another, strayed into our plane of existence. Mankind has described them as best he can. The Catholics saw demons and devils. In the Islamic world, they are called jinns. It is where the word genie comes from. They don't look like genies. I'm not referring to what you may have seen in cartoons, Mr. Walker. These entities can be very dangerous. Most don't concern themselves with humankind, but those that do travel to our plane or are brought here can be very vindictive. Such a being would think nothing of invading a human soul purely with the intent to cause suffering and misery. So is one of these things to my sister? Of that, I am 100% certain. The photograph you showed me leaves me in no doubt. And it's been there all this time? A decade is the blink of an eye for such a creature. They are eternal. But listen, you said she could be helped. Yes, perhaps. I can only try, Mr. Walker. Elaine, hi. Diane, dear. I'm so pleased to hear your voice. I I'm so worried about what happened. Carrie Box is around the place. Well, I'm fine. I told him that house is no place for you. It's so cold, don't you think? Yeah, I suppose. Lord knows what kind of state it's in. You know, there's... There's plenty of space here. <gasps> Diane? Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, the reception isn't good here. I'm, I'm in the basement. Whatever are you doing in there? What is it?
Mr. Walker. Mitch. My name's Mitch. Okay, Mitch. Most people tend to have difficulty in accepting the information I'm giving you. They don't like to think that the things depicted in this book may be for real. But you... I've been seeing things. Since Karen's been in the house. Like the camera. She broke it last night. I swear it was in pieces on the ground. This morning, fine. Well, I told you these beings can be very vindictive. They are not bound by the constraints of our reality. They are able to create their own alternate realities, or at least give the appearance of doing so. That is why helping Karen is gonna be very hard. Mitch, I'm sorry to say that I believe that this being is very comfortable inside your sister's body. It clearly enjoys tormenting people. And who better to torment than an innocent young girl? I believe that's why it chose her. It chooses to afflict the youngest, most innocent soul in the house. It knows our worst fears and uses them against us. Excuse me. Diane? about what happened today? No. What you thought happened? You thought something happened, but it didn't, right? I don't want to talk about it. Look, it's like when I thought Karen broke the camera. I could swear I saw it. I did see it, but it never happened. Look, these things, they scare us, but they're not real. It can only scare us if we let it. Must be Diane. Should I bring Karen down? No, not just yet. I need to lay down some ground rules first. So, what is this? Some kind of exorcism? Were you raised a Catholic? No. Well, yeah, kind of, on my mom's side. Oh, dear. It's always harder to unlearn what one has learned. Makes you feel any better I didn't pay much attention in Sunday school. Well, the Catholics have their ways with their fancy costumes and shiny trinkets. And sometimes it even works, though not for the reason they think. Now, these are my ground rules. I'm going to conduct a seance to try and contact the entity inside Karen's body. This means we need to link hands. Now, no matter what you hear, no matter what you see, no matter how traumatic or emotional the situation, you must not break the seance until I give you the command to do so. Maintaining contact with such a creature takes up an enormous amount of energy and concentration. It may be temperamental and aggressive. Breaking contact too soon could be disastrous for all of us. You said rules. Is that everything? No. Your wife must not come into this basement at any time. I'm pretty sure she'll be fine with that. At any time, Mitch.
got it. Does she know what she's doing? I don't know, I think so. Mitch, what if this thing, whatever it is, what if it hurts Karen, makes her worse? I don't think that's possible. Put her there. And she'll have to be bound into place. Really? Mitch, the struggle will not only be spiritual, but physical. The entity will be trying to gain dominance over Karen's soul. It is not unknown for the afflicted subject to suffer harm or even death during the process. Take her hand, Mitch. Be firm. Remember what I told you. Linking hands opens the channels of communication. It also creates a link between us and the entity's astral plane. If we break hands too early, we will fail to banish it. So what happens now? Ada? I want to speak to Karen Walker. Karen, can you hear me? Karen, is that you? Help me. It hurts. Be calm, Karen. We are going to help you. Your brother is here with me. We are going to help you. I won't let you. We are going to take away the pain, Karen. Won't let you. It likes hurting me. It doesn't want to stop. Nevertheless, we will continue. You can't. It will hurt me. It will kill me. I don't think so, Karen. It will. It will kill me if you come for it. If it kills you, Karen, it will have nowhere to go. It will hurt you. It will hurt all of you. What if I speak to it kindly, Karen? What if I try to persuade it not to do such a thing? It doesn't want to talk to you. What if it doesn't I... want to listen to you. It doesn't want to listen to you. It doesn't want to listen to you. Oh! her match. Her soul will leave her body, and the creature will be forced out with it. Now we know it doesn't want that. But it will fight. Hard. You know, there, there was this one time when we were kids. There were these two big old fallen trees we used to climb on. One time I finally plucked up courage to jump from one to the other. It seemed like some kind of achievement, I guess. 
So I dared Karen to do it. She was a lot smaller than me. I knew she couldn't do it, but I dared her anyway. So she jumped. And of course she fell short. And as she grabbed for the tree, her hand got caught. And she broke her wrist. I'll never forget the sound and the way she cried. So I carried her back home. I took a scolding from my mom while my dad drove us to the hospital. I learned right there what it meant to be a big brother. I was supposed to look out for Karen. Protect her. You're doing the right thing, Mitch. You couldn't have stopped that creature from inhabiting Karen's body. You were just a child yourself. Fortunately for you, the creature chose the youngest, most innocent soul. If it hadn't been Karen, it would have been you. Let's try this again. Karen Walker. I want to speak to Karen Walker. Your baby's gonna die. Your husband can't be the baby. It's gonna die. No, Karen! Karen. Karen Walker. I want to speak with Karen Walker. doesn't want to talk to you. That's fine. I want to speak to Karen. I have your brother here, Karen. You remember your brother, Mitch? Mitch. He left me. Left me to rot. Forgot about me. Mitch is sorry. He wants to help you. He can't. It will hurt me. It will kill me. Mitch is sorry he left you. And he's sorry for the time that you got hurt. Do you remember what happened in the woods? Yes. It hurt. Mitch hurt me. Do you remember what happened? You jumped from a tree. Yes. Mitch made me jump. It's his fault. He hates me. And you hurt yourself, didn't you? Yes. You broke your leg. Yes. My leg hurt so much. It's Mitch's fault. He wanted to hurt me. Oh, really? Yes. That's why he's here. He wants it to hurt me. He wants it to kill me. But you didn't break your leg, did you, Karen? It was only your wrist. Ada, 
Well, it didn't like that, did it? You tripped it? Oh, I suspected it was taunting us. Pretending to be Karen. Trying to discourage us. That's what they feed on. Emotional pain. You see, they have no physical body. Only the one they infiltrate. So what's our next move? I have to rest. Can you give me the book, please? And you'd better check how your wife is holding out. Yeah. When will this be over? I don't know. Uh, Ada's really tired. Oh, Ada's tired. I'm tired. I'm tired of all of this. Driving me mad. I'm, I'm hearing things. I'm seeing things. I know. Me too. It's okay. Why is this happening? It's okay. Ada says it's taunting us. It's playing on our feet. What is? I can't explain it. Well, that's not good enough, Mitch. Well, Ada's the expert. Well, I'll go and speak to Ada. Diane. Ada, out. Ada. Mitch. You have to get her out of here. What is happening? I said get out! You better do what she says. Do what she says. Mitch, you must obey my ground rules. Are we making progress? Absolutely. She looks worse. That's because we brought the entity closer to the surface. When it is so deep in a person's soul, only the Kirlian camera can detect its presence. But be warned, when we banish it entirely from your sister's body, there may be a moment when we both come face to face with it. I have seen people panic, almost lose their minds when confronted with such a being. You've, you've done this before? Banish such a creature? No, never. But you've seen one. In this house, you've been here before. Well, I haven't seen that picture in a long while. I was wondering where it had got to was inside that book. Well, that figures. I haven't had cause to look in this book for many years. Thirty years, to be exact. Why didn't you tell me? Would it have made any difference if I had? I don't know. Why don't you tell me now? Well, I knew your uncle, of course. Back in those days, a group of us would do the tours of the psychic fairs. Most of them were fakes and charlatans, but there was a close knot of five. Me, Alexander, and three others. Now, we understood the true power inherent in the knowledge we possessed. Or at least we thought we did. Alexander invested in the Curlian photography equipment. Some of the others thought it was a cheap parlor trick, photographing auras for a dollar apiece. But his theory was that if the camera could capture auras invisible to the naked eye, then it might be able to reveal other things too. Things like these entities? See, a creature like this had never been photographed in the whole of history. Can you imagine our excitement 
at the possibility of such a triumph, it would have vindicated our whole profession. But of course, first of all, we had to find one. Or make one come to us. You brought it here. The instructions for summoning were all here, if you knew where to look. So the five of us gathered here in the basement to hold a seance. We were planning to reach out to their plane. We thought we knew what we were doing. But none of us were prepared for the terrors that we unleashed. Of course, we tried to send it back, banish it back to its own plane. But you failed. The circle was broken too early. I realize that now. You know, that night so disturbed us that we never saw each other again. We just couldn't face each other. And it wasn't until you showed me that picture of Karen and told me the date when she fell sick. That's when I realized that somehow this creature managed to stay in this house, lying in wait for a fresh young soul. So you're responsible. Karen's been tortured for 30 years by something you brought into this house? Mitch, I didn't know. Your uncle never told me. He would have known immediately, of course, as soon as the picture was developed. And he would have tried to do what we're doing now. But as soon as your parents took Karen away and broke all contact, there would have been nothing more he could have done. He wrote letters. He wrote letters to my mom. But she burned them. Jesus. He tried to tell her. I'm sorry, Mitch. You're going to fail, Karen. Mitch, wait. That is not Karen. You're going to fail, and you're going to die. So you've finally given up on the pretense. It hurts. It hurts. Are you going to let me speak to Karen or not? Karen is busy. Where is she? She's in here with me. And we'll continue. What are you doing? This has gone on long enough. I believe there is only one option left to end Karen's suffering. Take her hand, Mitch. No, oh, God. There must be another way. If Karen dies, her soul will leave her body and this earth. And this evil bastard will be taken with it. You wouldn't dare. Fuck you! Cut! You see how angry it's becoming? You wouldn't dare kill your own sister! You couldn't! Fucking fight it! Mommy's boy! Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> Ignore it, Mitch. After I forgave all your sins, 
What sins? I didn't hurt anyone. You sinned against the Lord, Mitch. That's why your bastard child died. I prayed for it every day. And the good Lord, in his wisdom, took your bastard child and cast it into the pits of hell where it belongs. Don't listen to her, Mitch. Alongside your bastard father, who had his dirty way with other women whenever my back was turned. That's not true! Mitch, don't! Your anger feeds its power. You're all I have in the world, Mitch. <laughs> no. Don't! Karen? Jesus, I think she's dead. Karen, can you hear me? Karen. Karen. Karen, it's just a camera, all right? I'm gonna take a picture. Ader, it's... It's worked! Mitch, you didn't call me yesterday. 
Uh, and Diane sounded so strange. I've been beside myself with worry. Everything is fine, Mom. All right, everything. Mitch? Mitch, are you there? The creature chose the youngest, most innocent soul.